If you're in the Northern Hemisphere, your weather is probably getting a lot warmer. That makes it linen season. And even if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, you can sew with linen the whole year. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous fabric. This is the start of a little mini series here on the channel all about linen. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing. And this is the start of a mini series on this channel about linen. I was planning to make one video. It was going to end up being a type of linen movie in the length of it so after some thought about how you would receive this content better how it would be most helpful for you I have decided to separate it into a mini series I think that is much more helpful it sort of divides the topic into more searchable areas for you to come back and look at as a resource in this month of June you are going to see a lot of linen content whether it's technical content about the fabric itself tips and tricks about how to sew it but also inspiration and some linen makes I do have an interesting and sizable collection of linen up there in my wardrobe and I'm really really keen to get some of that and start using it because I really love it. This first episode is about the linen fabric itself. It's going to be super interesting because you see how this fabric is actually made from the plant after having the fabric in your hands, the types of weaves, the types of weights, what types of styles would work really well with linen. Also really practical things as to how to pre-treat it, how to pre-wash it before sewing it and if it's a fabric that you're not too keen on I have so many pros about the fabric to share with you and just a few cons you know every fabric has its thing so this is what this first episode is about I'm excited to start I hope you are too I hope you get ready to pull out your linen pieces I'm sure you have one or two at least in your collection or maybe it's a fabric you want to look further into if you haven't worked with it before because it's amazing I promise let's get set up outside I'll be back here later towards the end. Linen is a gorgeous fabric. It's one of the oldest types of fibers and textiles described in history. Thousands of years ago, people were already making linen. It's made from the flax plant. There is a whole process to actually get the fibers out of these long, tall rod type of plants. The way that linen is made from the flax plant is really, really fascinating, incredible actually. The flax plant only takes about 100 days to grow. It's harvested at the end of July and there's no need for special irrigation or pesticides for this plant to grow really well. It grows best in cooler climates. That's why most of the production is made in Canada, in parts of Europe and some in China. It's not only the textile that you can get from flax plants, you can also get flax seeds but then the way that it's planted is a little different to when the goal is textiles. It grows about four feet tall when it's mature. It blooms only for one day, really pretty light blue type purple flowers. The flax plant isn't cut, it's uprooted because the fibers are in the roots also so you want to use the whole plant. It remains on the fields for a process called redding where the plant is subjected to rain, moisture, sun and all of this is going to break down the pectin that binds the linen fibers to the stem of the plant. So all this process gives it its unique color, the rain, the soil, the sun, it'll give it that beautiful color. Then the plants are removed and they are subjected to several mechanical processes to separate the fibers from the stem. This can be done manually at a smaller scale or an industrial scale. These processes are called sketching and hackling where the plant is combed finely. It looks like blonde hair actually and then it can be spun into flax yarn. It looks really neat. These bobbins of yarn are sent to the weavers and then they go on the loom where the fibers are weaved. It's been really fascinating to learn more about this and share it with you. It's quite, quite time consuming and lengthy, quite difficult, I would say. That's why the process takes a really, really long time. Because the process is so lengthy, it turns out to be pretty costly. This is a type of fabric that is totally biodegradable. You can buy it in its pure form. That means it's not combined with other types of fibers, so 100% linen. You would find that this type of fabric is more expensive. You can also find linen blended with other fibers and that brings down the cost. The most common blend that you would see available for purchase is linen with rayon. Locally where I live, the composition I see mainly is linen 55%, rayon 45%. 
it's still quite medium you can still see the slab texture of the linen there by slab texture I mean that each fiber is a little different if you look at the fabric you can see the fibers and you can see the weave some might be thicker than others some might be thinner so it's pretty unique to look at so you would still see all the beautiful texture of linen when there is rayon in there the only difference is that it might wrinkle a little bit less than 100% linen although rayon is still a really wrinkly fabric it's just a little bit less you will have a little bit more drape also because 100% linen is a little bit more structured it is actually the type of blend that I use the most because it is more affordable it is still more expensive than other types of fabrics but sort of a middle ground between 100% linen and then like cheaper fabrics like cotton or rayon so it's still a little bit pricey but much more attainable to buy yardage of the other common blend that you see is linen with cotton this is more of a shirting fabric can be very lightweight it'll still shrink it'll still wrinkle a little bit less than 100% linen then and then there are other types of blends that are harder to find but they do exist like linen silk blends I have not had the pleasure of buying that type of blend but I know that type of fabric is out there and it exists so I hope someday I can get my hands on a little bit to see how it works and how it feels you can buy raw linen in its natural color it will be a beige color you see different types of tones in that weave and the raw color of linen is really pretty very beautiful I have sewn with raw linen before and I think it's amazing then you find linen fabric that has been pre-treated for you to sew with and it tends to be softer and you can find linen that has been stonewashed similar to how they treat denim before selling it to you it is a pretty lengthy process basically the fibers are subjected to a process that has agitation particles going up against it to break it down a little and then you end up with a really soft type of fiber to work with another way that linen is pre-treated is it's washed with enzymes that also makes the fabric softer so you might find linen that has already been pre-treated and pre-shrunk it's really nice if you know that that is the case for a lot of us we would just buy it and we don't know how it's been processed before you can find linen fabric in different types of weights so there are some very lightweight linen fabric featherweight handkerchief weight and those are great for tops and dresses maybe you would need to line them then you'll find medium weight linen that this is actually my favorite type to work with and those are amazing for pants bottom weight perfect I really love that then you have heavier weight linens I used a lot in home decor cushion covers you'll find whole couches made out of linen very expensive you can make jackets coats blazers out of heavier linen and it works really really well and you know linen is a fiber in itself it can be weaved in different ways and you'll find plain weave just a typical weave you'll find some that have been weaved into stripes or checks you can't even tell which is the right and the wrong side because the different colors you find in there are part of the weave You can find linen that has already been embroidered for you by machines by yardage and that is more expensive of course it takes the price quite up there there are different types of textures that you can find while keeping the composition 100% I've even seen crinkle crepe out of linen it's like crinkle rayon but it's not rayon it's linen it still stretches and grows but the fiber itself is linen and it's very fine you can find a lot of types of fabrics out there where the composition is linen so in regards to sewing linen is going to work with styles that have the most interesting details if you have curved seams those are going to look amazing in linen shaping details like princess seams that you can top stitch those down and they will look amazing intact and pleats are going to press and look really crisp Collars will have nice structure and they'll stand up, you know, with the aid of interfacing, of course, but there'll be nice structured details that are going to look amazing. Different shapes of patch pockets that you sew onto your garments are also going to look really nice and neat. They're going to be super easy to sew on. Also, all the folds you have to do, the top stitching, they're all features that stand out a lot with linen. If you want to sew welt pockets, it's really easy to manipulate the fabric, even though the technique might seem a little bit more advanced, a little lengthier, just because 
because the fabric is so easy to work with, it'll be more achievable for you with really nice crisp results. So don't be scared of welt pockets if you're working with linen. And then if you have exposed facings or curved bands or necklines of jackets, those are gonna work out so nice with linen. Same as curved waistbands on pants, on skirts. I'm gonna give you 14 pros of working with linen which means that these are the benefits, these are the good things that you get from sewing with linen, which is always good. And I'm trying to convince you to work with this fabric if you haven't worked with it before. And maybe you have a few in your collection, but you've been a bit daunted to bring it out and start working with. Number one, you can find this in a lot of vibrant colors. Linen takes up dyes very well, so you can get amazing colors. That's what I love the most about linen because usually whatever color I'm looking for, I'm pretty much able to find it. Even if it is a linen, with a rayon blend you find amazing colors anywhere from pastel to the most vivid ones number two it's super comfortable to wear it's static free you don't need to worry about this fabric sticking to your body number three it's really soft and really really unlikely to cause rashes or skin allergies if you have sensitive skin this in the context that you are not sewing with linen that has a blend of polyester in there I have found in the past that when I've bought fabric that has a little bit of polyester in the blend it can get itchy and it can get uncomfortable on the skin. I don't like how it feels and it just doesn't last or look as nice as linen, as 100% linen or linen blended with cotton or rayon. Number four is that linen works for any style. So it would be amazing for a really tailored suit, a tailored blazer, lined pants, you know, a really fitted sheet dress with lots of seam lines and it's amazing for really formal styles but it's also amazing for really casual styles also great for your comfy pull-on pants have elastic at the waist a blouse that has a little bit more ease so for any type of style you want linen is probably going to work it will just have to do more with the type of weight of linen fabric that you have but formal or casual it'll work number five i say it's linen season and it's because the weather is getting hotter and this is a really cool fabric to wear it doesn't really hold the body heat inside the fabric it's absorbent if you do sweat a little bit so it's a great great fabric for hot weather even if you're wearing full length pants and full length sleeves i find for myself that this is a fabric i can wear year round i'm in winter right now but it doesn't really get that cold during the day i mean look at me i'm still in my short sleeves right so linen for me is just an all year type of fabric that I can wear number six is that linen is just plain gorgeous it's just beautiful to look at it's got a type of sheen it's lustrous on its own I think it would be really hard for anyone to just look at the fabric and say oh this is ugly this fabric is really ugly it is really really pretty and you can make the most simple of style but just the fact that it's made out of linen it's going to be a beautiful timeless piece Number seven, now this is great news for those newer to sewing. It's so easy to work with linen, it's easy to cut, it's easy to sew. You do need to pin your pattern pieces together but you don't need that many pins because the fabric isn't sliding around everywhere. It tends to want to stick to each other in the layers that you're sewing and that helps. It's just so, so nice to work with and for you who are starting to sew or are newer to sewing, if you make just a simple garment out of linen, you'll probably have a nicer experience than if you use something slippery like like rayon for the first time. Number eight is also a pro for those of you who are starting to sew. Even if you make a simple garment out of linen, it's gonna look really well sewn, even if it's not that perfect because the texture of linen is gonna hide imperfections. If you got a little wobble in your top stitching, you know, it's probably gonna be hidden within the fabric because it's a little bit fluffy. It's a really forgiving fabric. Now, what is even more forgiving is if you use a rayon linen blend with a print, that is even more forgiving so you can get a lot of satisfaction knowing that the garment is going to look really beautiful even if it's not so perfectly sewn there are other types of fabrics that show flaws in sewing a lot more but linen is not one of them <laughs> number nine linen is really easy to care for even before you sew your garment or after you have your garment you can wash it in the machine you don't need many precautions about it being wet in there it, you can just throw it in the wash and you'll be okay number 10 you can dry it however you want to dry it you can hang it air dry it that's perfectly fine that's what i do 
but if you like a dryer and you want to use a dryer you can use your dryer and that's fine we'll talk about the pre-treatment of the fabric in a little bit once you're in the process of using your garment several times washing you can just wash and dry wash and dry you'll be okay number 11 it's a really strong fabric when it's wet so you don't need to worry about hanging it with care that it might rip when it's wet you know I've talked about rayon being really really delicate when it's wet same as silk you can sort of rip it when it's wet that, that does not happen with linen it's actually a stronger fabric when it's wet when it's dry it's still a strong fabric so you don't need to be that careful about hanging it or manipulating it when it's wet number 12 linen just gets nicer and nicer the older it becomes so the more you wash it the softer it becomes the colors become nicer also so that's why I like thrifting linen items I'm always on the lookout for linen dresses because the fabric has already been pre-treated and washed so many times it's so 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 soft to touch and beautiful to look at so it's not a fabric that gets uglier in time I just think it gets prettier in time and if the, even if the color fades a little bit over time it's still really really pretty to look at number 13 I mentioned that it was a fabric that was sort of loosely woven and you could see the fibers in there exactly which is something that you can't see with every type of fabric so when you can see the fibers it's really easy to fold your fabric correctly it's easy to find the grain line and the cross grain and it's easier to place your pattern pieces nice so that they don't end up twisting or just falling on your body in a way that they're not supposed to which happens sometimes when you place your patterns a little off grain so I think linen is really helpful for that. It's just so easy to work neatly with it because you can see the fibers and you can just take them as reference to place your pattern pieces. Number 14, it's an amazing fabric that helps you have fun. So you can have fun with decorative stitches on your machine. Even the most basic machines have some type of decorative stitch there. You can use that to sew on the hems. You know, I've done exposed facings in the past where I just used one of the chosen stitches all over the facing and just took my time and drew the lines where I wanted to sew them onto. And then I have this amazing facing that I can sew onto my garment exposed. One of the projects I've had the most fun with recently and that done on linen is just beautiful. I wouldn't want to do that on cotton, on like polyester and other types of fabrics, but on linen, it's amazing. It's just so, so pretty. And you can do it with the same color or with a contrast color. If you have a fancier machine that has embroidery where you can upload designs, you know, you can embroider patch pockets. You can do so many things. You can do embroidery details on collars, on cuffs, you know, you can have a lot of fun. And I think linen is one of the fabrics that those details will shine on the best so we've seen 14 pros I'm trying to convince you to use the fabric but as usual with pros there are some cons only eight <laughs> so I mentioned that this fabric is made out of the flax plant and the way that you extract these fibers that are within the core of the plant is really lengthy and that's why the fabric turns out to be really costly so if you look at cost of fabric silk and linen are the most costly ones in their pure state 100% so it is one of the most expensive fabrics. Around here where I live in Brazil, I can find pure linen for about 26 to 30 dollars a meter, which is pretty steep compared to other fabrics. I can find the linen rayon blends that are still super nice and I work with a lot for about half of that, 15, 16 dollars, which is okay, I'm happy to pay that and I'll just buy a few yards and that, that's okay. But for linen, I would really have to be sure about what I'm making and the exact yardage so that I can buy the exact amount that I need because the price is just so much higher. But still, I mean, it's beautiful, it's worth it. I think it's worth it. <laughs> Number two, it's hard to tell which is the right and the wrong side. Although if you end up making a mistake and you stand out in the sun, in the light later on when the piece is, is finished, there might be a subtle difference that you could see later on that you don't see with your eyes when you're sewing. So it's something that could make the sewing process a little bit longer because on some techniques, you really need that information going into your brain quickly. And if you have to take a second to think about it, it can just make the process a little lengthier. You can see the fibers when you look at the fabric. And that means it's pretty much loosely woven compared to other fabrics, which makes it a little bit transparent. Even if it's not so light, if you hold it up in the sun, you might see the sun coming right through. So you need to take into account the sheerness. 
and that would just depend on what type of garment you're making but you might consider wearing a slip underneath or doing some lining you do need to think about that and you might want to consider lining which is an extra step that I, I know a lot of people don't want to take or a lot of people think is really hard but it's not but you do need to consider that depending on the type of style that you're sewing number four it is a fabric that does shrink considerably anywhere from 10 to 15 percent so of course you need to pre-wash it not just because of the shrinkage but because you don't know where it's coming from and what things are in the fabric that you want to get rid of anyway so it, you do need to pre-treat this fabric 100% and I'll talk about that in a sec this is a type of fabric that will fray a lot it'll fray really easily as soon as you cut it and you look at it if you manipulate it too much it'll just start unraveling on the edges so that is something that you need to be careful about and definitely you need to finish seams I'd say this is not a con that you need to finish seams because you always need to finish seams but I know some people just leave them or well, this is a fabric where you definitely cannot number six is the one that I think puts a lot of people off sewing with linen or buying things with linen and that it wrinkles but it doesn't matter because it's linen and if you see wrinkly linen it doesn't matter because linen is pretty just let it be linen and let it do what it wants to do there are things you can do before you sew that can lessen the depth of these wrinkles and how long lasting they can be if you just accept the fact that your item is going to be slightly crumpled and slightly wrinkled it won't matter it is part of the charm of linen i see it as a con maybe if you're really stressed about having a wrinkle here but if you just learn to accept it then it, it's not a con really when you cut out pattern pieces that have curved edges like armholes and necklines maybe you have some type of curve in the center front if you're doing a blazer facings lapels curved waistbands any type of edge on a curve can stretch out easily because the weave is so loose it's not a firm fabric like that when the edges are raw that brings in extra steps in sewing to prevent that so i would say that is a con compared to like a hundred percent cotton it's not so delicate like that around the raw edges like linen is number eight is that linen actually does react to the body heat that you have so when the garment is on your body and your body is bringing that heat out onto the garment it can make the fibers just relax and loosen up a little that's why garments tend to grow a little bit as they're being worn which makes you which is another item that you need to think about when you're choosing what size to sew or also what type of style you are wanting to make with this so i want to talk a little bit about pre-washing and I want to give you two options because it all depends on what type of garment you're going to sew. So if you're going to make some pull-on pants that you know you are going to wear on a regular basis that you want to care for at home, basically a casual style or a blouse, something that you want to just wear a lot and care for yourself, this is what you need to do to prevent these wrinkles from being so deep. Make sure you serge your edges before throwing your linen into the wash. It can get pretty vigorous in there. So you want to protect these edges. You don't want to lose a lot of fabric from the edge that's going to fray if you don't do that. So highly suggest. I would suggest you wash that linen at least two or three times. I know it seems like a lot, but it will make a big difference. Just use regular detergent, don't use bleach. You can put your fabric in the dryer. And then this is where, if it's in the dryer, you know, doing its thing try to remove it from the dryer before it's fully dry remove it from there when it's slightly damp now this is the same thing you would do if you're air drying your linen just go out there and touch it a little bit just make sure you're keeping an eye on it while it's drying bring it inside when it's slightly damp and now this is when we press all our yardage we press it and this process of washing it several times and then giving it a good press before sewing is going to lessen how deep these wrinkles can be in the future so the process of it being wet then being a little damp adding on all that steam and the heat from the iron it just makes those fibers relax and not be so tight like this so whenever we work with the fabric or wear it the wrinkles are just going to be a little less pronounced i mean they will still be there but they will be a little bit less than if we didn't do this process of course this process is going to allow the linen to shrink all it wants to shrink before we sew with the garments so that is good also now if you want to make a garment that is say a lined coat or a lined blazer lined pants a suit something that's tailored something that is going to take you days to make i would probably suggest that you don't need to do the whole process of washing several times and all of that business most probably with this type of garment you will be sending it to the dry cleaners at least i know i would you know if you're making something tailored you have 
structures inside that give support, you have stays, you have shoulder pads, you have lining, you have layers of interfacing in some areas probably. And those are structures that you don't want to ruin by throwing it in the machine that's gonna shake the garment. You just don't throw a blazer in the wash, right? So because this is a garment that will most likely be dry cleaned after the garment is made, you don't really need to pre-wash it that many times. You can wash it once, you can press it once and that is it basically just to allow it to shrink and get rid of the nasty things of the fabric but you won't really need to do that really really lengthy process i definitely have a couple of blazers that are lined made out of linen that i would dry clean then the pre-treatment isn't that intensive you know because it's going to be done at the dry cleaners the, the shrinkage factor won't be there anymore they are going to press it in a professional way decide what you want this for what you're making and according to that do the big intensive process of pre-washing or just do it in a simple way i hope this episode was helpful to you as an introduction about linen i hope you get some ideas and start thinking about using this fabric the next episode you'll see in this linen mini series will be all the practical goodies about the sewing actually i have collated so many clips from my own content where i've been sewing with linen to make this type of content really interactive with you i don't really just want to be sitting here talking to you because that's boring <laughs> so I do want to be inserting a lot of images that relate to what I am discussing so that it's really clear for you. These videos are really high production, they take a long time. Just to make episodes 1 and 2 has taken me days and days and days, you don't even want to know. I just want you to know that I'm doing my best, I'm trying to make super good content for you. So you do not want to miss the next episode, please subscribe, tap on the bell so you get notified when I upload all the content. It's always very helpful and I do upload quite a bit every month to keep you entertained. I'll see you very very soon with all the best tips about sewing, linen, proven, it's what I do in my own practice and always with amazing results. I'll see you back for more linen. Bye!